Hello students and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. So this is another video on enzyme detection test or biochemical test where we perform some tests to identify our isolates depending on the enzymes. So urease and gelatinase or gelatin liquefaction is what we are going to discuss in this video. So about enzyme detection in biochemical test. So why we uh, focus on enzymes because enzymes or the enzyme systems they are unique to each organisms and the presence of a particular enzyme provides an ability to a microbe to perform a particular reaction and thus we focus on these enzymes to be used in our identification or differentiation of our test cultures okay so there are different enzyme detection tests that we perform of which catalase oxidase and amylase a video is uploaded on these three and now we are going to focus on urease and gelatinase and later on lipase and proteins so first is urease test so urease test is used to identify organisms that are capable of hydrolyzing urea to produce ammonia and carbon dioxide you can see the reaction is given here so in presence of urease or the enzyme urease it hydrolyzes the urea which is a product of decarboxylation of amino acids and it hydrolyzes urea to produce ammonia and carbon dioxide now the formation of ammonia it alkalinizes the medium that means it shifts the ph towards alkaline and the ph shift is detected by the color change of phenol red that is from light orange to yellow to pink okay now this is the test here the rapid urease positive organisms they turn the entire medium pink within 24 hours weakly positive organisms they take several days and negative organisms they produce no color or you will see bright yellow color as a result of acid production and as phenol red it uh, turns yellow in case of acidic pH okay so for this test the media that is used is Christensen's urea agar so this is the composition here and pH you can see it is around 6.7 plus minus 0.2 at 25 degree Celsius okay so here the method is little bit different you dissolve all the ingredients in 100 ml of distilled water and you filter sterilize those ingredients then for making agar base what we do suspend agar in another separate 900 ml of distilled water boil it to dissolve completely and autoclave at 21 degrees celsius for 15 minutes at 15 psi let your agar cool at 50 to 55 degrees celsius and at this point you aseptically add your 100 ml of urea base okay to this cooled agar solution and mix thoroughly then you have to quickly distribute uh, your urea agar to test tubes and you have to distribute or dispense around 4 to 5 ml of media and cool them uh, to make slants okay slightly tilt your tube to prepare slants now about the procedure you have to strike the surface of agar slant with a portion of well isolated colony or you can make uh, or you can use actually broth culture of culture that is incubated at uh, inoculated in brain heart infusion broth okay you can use that broth one to two drops to inoculate directly or you can streak on your agar slant now leave the cap on loosely and incubate the tube at 35 to 37 degrees celsius in ambient air for 48 hours okay to max 7 days now this depends so if your culture is um, rapid urease positive then within 48 hours max 48 hours you will get your results if it is weakly positive then it may take several days okay now examine for the development of pink color as long as for 7 days you can see here positive reaction is development of intense magenta to bright pink color within first 48 hours 24 to 48 hours 
Examples of Proteus, Cryptococcus, Cornebacterium, uh, Helicobacter pyroli, Ersinia, Brucella species. And negative reaction is no color change. It is given by Escherichia, Shigella and Salmonella. So you can see here color changes to pink. Thus, it is a positive reaction. If slightly pink color or just, just a pink color is developed on the surface of media, then it is weakly or delayed positive reaction and no color change, then it is negative. So this was about urease. Now about gelatinase or gelatin liquefaction test. Now what is gelatin? So gelatin is a protein derived from animal protein collagen. Proteolytic bacteria, they have ability to digest protein and consequently they may liquefy gelatin and coagulate serum. So that's the reason this test is used as index of proteolytic activity, which is useful in differentiating certain organisms. But the reaction may take several days to develop depending on your culture. So gelatin, which is to be used, it must be free from preservatives and inhibitory amounts of heavy metals because even preservatives and heavy metals, they have a, a certain inhibitory effect on our cultures okay but they may have so we have to use the gelatin which is free from preservatives and heavy metals now gelatin itself it does not support growth of many pathogens but it is added to liquid nutrient medium to produce a firm gel that we call it as nutrient gelatin and this property of gel formation is what we are going to use as an indicator for our positive or negative reaction now, gelatin hydrolysis test is used to detect the ability of an organism to produce gelatinase that liquefy gelatin. This process takes place in two sequential reactions. The first reaction is gelatinase degrade gelatin to polypeptide and then polypeptides are further converted to amino acids. Now, the bacterial cell can take up these amino acids easily and use them in their metabolic process. Now this is the composition of nutrient gelatin medium here. You can see it has enzymatic digest of gelatin, beef extract, gelatin and pH is 6.8. So the standard and most common procedure that is employed for gelatin liquefaction test is stabbing method okay, or gelatin uh, nutrient gelatin stab method. So what you do, you prepare media, autoclave it and you dispense around 4 to 5 ml to a test tube. Now, generally at 28 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, the gelatin is liquid. So it will be um, quite semi-solid on getting uh, cooled. Okay. Then you have to inoculate a heavy inoculum of test bacteria around 18 to 24 hours old by stabbing four or five times okay half inch of the tube containing nutrient gelatin medium now stabbing is another method of inoculation where we use a straight loop or sorry straight wire to just to be inserted you have to prick your uh, medium okay insert it three to four times for inoculation that is stabbing now incubate the uh, inoculated tubes along with uninoculated medium so that it will act as control, okay? Uninoculated medium at 35 degrees Celsius. Now 35 degrees Celsius, so that our culture will grow. It will produce the enzyme if it has the ability to produce gelatinase and it will liquefy gelatin. So we are incubating at 35 degrees Celsius or at the best uh, optimum temperature of your culture, that depends. Max 48 hours incubation is enough, but still on incubating for 48 hours, you are not getting results, then you can extend up to two weeks. That depends on your culture again. Now, after incubation, you remove your tubes daily for, from incubator and you place them in ice bath or refrigerator, okay, for 30 minutes until the control tube gets solidified. Now, our gelatin will get solidified at the lower temperatures. 
okay so that's the reason we need ice bath or refrigeration for observing our results so gelatin normally liquefies at 25 28 degrees celsius and above so to confirm liquefaction due to gelatinous activity we need to immerse our tubes in ice bath or keep it in refrigerator so after 30 minutes you remove your tubes tilt your tubes slightly or gently to observe liquefaction by the test organism if you are not getting results or you are getting a negative test then re-incubate your tubes for next two weeks and keep observing now you can see here so after refrigeration when you tilt your tubes a positive tube should show liquefaction but your control tube should be solid that's how you observe your results even you should see growth of your media or oh, sorry growth of your culture in media now positive reaction is partial or total liquefaction of inoculated tubes at 4 degrees celsius within 40 days okay and if you are performing gelatin liquefaction test in or gelatin hydrolysis test in petri plate then you should see clear zones around gelatin or gelatin is positive colonies negative reaction is complete solidification and no clear zones on your gelatin hydrolysis plate okay now if you get a question on uh, this particular biochemical test that give examples of gelatinase uh, positive cultures then here are some examples you can see bacillus cyclis clostridium perfusions then proteus vulgaricus cerasia liquefactions and staphylococcus aureus okay so this was about gelatinase and urea so i hope the concept is clear you are good to go with your practicals and biochemical test and for viva so i hope you like my videos do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you